weary traveler. I am known as JD, and this is Comics Are Awesome, where we bring you all that is awesome in comics. Let me tell you a tale of adventure and romance, danger and tragedy, a tale of dungeons and dragons. <laughs> Let the Dungeons and the Dragons begin. It's D&D. Fighting with the legends of yore. It's D&D. Never kissed a lady before. Nope. Woo! Let me regale. You know, no. No. I'm not going to do the whole review in that voice. Let's talk D&D. While I suspect many of my viewers are familiar with the basics of Dungeons & Dragons, let's take a look at it from both a historical perspective and my own past with the game. Created in 1974 as an offshoot of miniature-based wargaming, Dungeons & Dragons took the players into a fantasy world where, instead of controlling an army, players created a single character that they would play. And while war games were about defeating the opposing army, D&D was about playing your character, defeating challenges, and leveling up so you can take on greater challenges. You typically play in a group to four to six players with another player acting as the Dungeon Master, or DM, who creates the world you play in, designing both enemies and traps as well as rewards and non-player characters. Actions are decided with dice, and liberal quoting from Monty Python and the Holy Grail is not required, though it is quite common. What is your name? Sir Galahad of Camelot. What is your quest? I seek the Grail. What is your favorite color? Blue. No. While D&D has got a reputation of being a game about kill them and take their stuff, but a lot of people found that they really enjoyed playing their characters and enjoyed the escapism of taking the role of someone else. Role playing is ultimately about imagination. Whether it's playing as a noble knight or a murderous barbarian, it's about acting as somebody that you're not. Without that scratching my creative itch, I doubt I'd be doing these videos today. So yes. You can blame them on it. I mentioned in my Blade review that I played a lot of the role-playing game Vampire the Masquerade, but I think my friends bonded more over D&D. Dungeons & Dragons encourages players to work together in order to succeed. And while my players and I occasionally got into disputes... Fuck you, Greg. You know what you did. Some of my fondest memories are those of sitting around the gaming table, eating too much pizza, and drinking too many sodas, and playing way too late in the night. And before anyone asks, we don't talk about the movie. Good. You carry on of your rage. So when I heard that there was a new D&D comic, I frankly couldn't be bothered. Yeah, it seems a bit weird now after all that build-up, but, but by the mid-2000s, my friends and I didn't game as much as we used to. Some of us got married, some of us had other hobbies to preoccupy us, but scheduling just got a lot harder. Games would get started that would peter out after a session or two. My bad. And barring a brief spark with the release of the 4th edition Dungeons & Dragons, I had moved on from my tabletop gaming days. So when IDW announces a new comic series in 2010, it was barely a blip on my radar. It doesn't help that licensed comics sometimes have a history of being a cash-in from companies who don't understand or appreciate the source material. But after the first couple of issues came out, I kept hearing buzz. And then I realized why. The writer was John Rogers. For those of you who aren't familiar with Rogers, besides writing for the D&D actual game, he also wrote for the amusing Jackie Chan adventures, created and exactly produces the TV series Leverage, which I love, and oh, and he co-created the Blue Beetle series. I may review Blue Beetle in detail at some point, but Linkar has already done that, so for now I'll say it was an excellent comic series and it is one of the few books I would give to pretty much anyone as a recommendation. It's that good. So when I found out Rogers was writing the D&D comic, I had to try it out, and I'm so glad that I did. Talking about this comic is kind of weird, as at the time of this recording, it's currently on issue 14, and, well... Most of the stuff I review are complete runs. Or, possibly more accurately, most of what I review has been cancelled. <laughs> But as this is a series that has just started entering into its second year, and as the second trade has just come out, I feel a little bit reluctant to go my usual route of running you through the entire first story arc. But I will cover about the first issue in a half or so. So make your roll against spoiler damage, which I think in third edition is a fortitude save, but I think in fourth it's a saving th You know what? This joke is too nerdy even for me. 
For those of you with the hardcover, I'll be skipping the Zero issue. It's a good story, but it's more of a tease for the series proper rather than essential reading. So the first issue starts off with a group of kids attacking our heroes in a burning building, with a halfling stating, On the bright side, they're orphan zombies, so nobody's gonna miss them. Well, that's it. Review's over. I mean, there's not much more I can do to sell you on this book after that. So, yeah, 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 catchphrase, roll credits. You're still here. Fine, I'll finish the review. We then flash back to the start of the day when we see all five of our principal lead characters, nicknamed Fels Five. And let's use that as a chance to introduce our five leads. You might recognize Halfling Bree Three Hands from the aforementioned previous page. We also have Varys, the Elven Ranger. Next up is Call Colanduran, a Dwarven Paladin. The newest member of the team is Tisha Swornhart, a Tiefling, basically someone who's descended from people who made packs with demons, who specializes as a warlock, and our leader, Adric Fell, a plain old human fighter. They're at the local tavern, which if you've ever played D&D, then you probably realize how appropriate this is. The number of games that start off in a tavern is gigantorageous. Whether it's a drunken old man willing to give away a map to great treasure because the trek is too dangerous, the mysterious stranger in the corner who warns a group of impending doom, or just a bunch of adventurers meeting for the first time looking for work. Being a D&D adventurer at a tavern is like being a frat guy at a brothel on dollar night. You may not like what you get, but you're going to walk away with something. In this particular instance, it results in zombies bursting through the floor. Our heroes defend themselves, but the zombies quickly return from being the walking dead to the more traditional variety. Of course, this happens just before the fantasy equivalent of 5-0 shows up. Our heroes are taken before the Lord Warden under suspicion of killing the people. Er, killing them while they are still alive, not while they're undead monstrosities. Bree is fairly quick to throw their newest party member under the bus. What was different about today? The tiefling joined our company. She tried to take over Falcrest with her zombies and blame us. I transformed two score people into zombies to run uselessly through the tavern's basements. I made sure to do this just seconds after I signed papers bonding myself to the people I would frame for this heresy. She's playing a deep game, my lord. Gondor, we still hang people, yes? I love Bree. Next enters Copernicus Jinx. Greatest name ever. Copernicus is a wizard and Adric's former commanding officer. He seems to have a vested interest in Adric and his companions, and that makes Adric uneasy. Copernicus does an examination of one of the former zombies and detects the presence of energy from Shadowfell, a nightmare plane of existence located just next to their own. Where I come from, we call that Nebraska. Unfortunately, said energy starts to spread even further, possessing the Lord Warden and his guards. Copernicus Jinx. Greatest name ever! Copernicus wards the heroes so that they may escape and try to find the portal that the Shadow Plague is coming from. As they flee, Adric notices that the possessed were all running in the same direction. The party splits up, with Call, Varys, and Tisha taking caverns, and Adric and Bree taking the rooftops. <sighs> Rookie mistake. Every D&D player worth their salt knows you don't break up the party. Call's group discovers someone who looks like an alien in a black metal band performing a ritual. We then cut to Adric and Bree seeing the local orphanage on fire, where Adric's love interest Juliana is at. We are now cut up to the start of the issue where, KABOOM! An explosion rocks the orphanage. Water from the river begins to flood into the building as the children return to normal. Adric orders them to grab as many of the kids as they can, to which Bree replies... Good idea. They float so we can... Bree! What? They don't float? I love Bree. We flash back a bit before the explosion where Call charges the Ritualist, which turns out to be a shape-shifting changeling. They fight, and the changeling hints as to how Tisha came across her abilities and why she's adventuring. But the fireballs being flung around catch the chamber on fire, and the heroes escape through a pit trap. Just above them... Adric and Juliana have managed to gather their children to the roof of the orphanage when Call's group appears on the shore. Adric notices Bree has scampered off when she comes back with a boat. Just getting a little transport, boss. Somebody just left it lying around at the docks. Is that somebody now lying at the bottom of the river? Come on, like I'd murder somebody for a boat this small. This small? Hmm? I love Bree, especially when you spread wide against a cracker like this. Oh, this is cream cheese. Why do you ask? Weirdo. 
Our heroes regroup on the shore when Copernicus jinx. Greatest name ever! When Copernicus meets up with them. Fels 5 realizes that they have no proof that they were innocent of causing the zombies, as the changeling has escaped and the artifact was lost. So their only chance of proving their innocence is to track down the doppelganger and find the orb. Leaving Copernicus and Juliana to return the children, our heroes begin to track their foe. And thus begins our series of adventures, each leading from one to the next. This series is awesome. It has a great adventure, witty dialogue, and great characters. While on the surface, each character kind of fits into a standard mold, they are actually quite nuanced. Call comes across as your standard proud dwarf, but he's actually a bit of a romantic, as he'd rather be a poet than a paladin, but he needs to impress his prospective in-laws. Varys is your standard expert elven ranger, able to attract anything, but he prefers the city to the woods. Tisha seems to be the mystery woman, and the hardest one for me to get a firm grasp on. Though I'd like to get a firm grasp on her, uh... You know what? Never mind. Too easy. Adric is complicated. At times he seems brilliant, and at other times he seems like he only gets by thanks to luck. Sometimes both at the same time. He's a good man, and yet not afraid to get his hands dirty. He reminds me a bit of Malcolm Reynolds, if he is given a sword and a shield. Bree is... well, Bree. Not the most complicated of characters, but always good for comic relief. While researching this video, I realized that John Rogers is an expert at writing great characters. But more importantly, he writes great character interactions. Whether it's the guys in Leverage, Jaime and his supporting cast, and Blue Beetle, or Fells 5 here, it's not just about seeing what your favorite character will say next, but how someone else will react. It's a good sign of a smartly written book, which this is. I should also mention the art about now. Andrea DeVito, no relation to Danny, isn't the flashiest artist I've ever seen, but he's remarkably solid and tells the story well. I do think his work is perhaps slightly hampered by the inker, but it's still really impressive and tells the action well. Also, kudos to the coloring team. It's not something I typically notice, but the colors here really pop in a great way. So there you have it, folks. IDW's Dungeons & Dragons is a natural 20 of a good time. So go pick it up at a comic store near you. And remember, comics are awesome, and we're going to get the word out. In the basement, rolling dice, rolling dice. I'm a wizard, wizard. When we play, we do it right. Candles flicker, fighting dragons in my mind, in my mind. Just for kicks. DM says you're going to die. Roll a D6. Someone get me more coke!